So to go over the main points of this experiment first, our independent variable was length. You were making the wire longer. Your dependent variable was the resistance, which you were measuring indirectly because you were taking measurements of voltage, current, and then dividing one by the other. And your control was the area and the temperature, as well as any other environmental factors that you can think of. Now the really important aspect of this experiment is the linearization. It's very simple, but it really shows that you understand how li the linearization process works. If we draw a line of best fit, if I make a space here and draw it all so it looks neater. Okay, so if we have a look here, if we put the resistance on the y-axis and we plot length on the x-axis, what we can see is that our relationship should give us a proportionality that y should be proportional to x. And so therefore, when we plot r against l, if they are proportional, you should get a straight line graph through the origin. Okay, now this is super important and comes up a lot in this section of the exam paper. A proportional relationship is a straight line that goes through the origin. And this relationship tells us that we should be expecting a straight line that goes through the origin. We should not get an intercept, so if we do, it must be a systematic error. And our gradient is going to be equal to two things. It's going to be equal to the resistivity divided by the area. Some of you assumed that the gradient was equal to resistivity, but no. As you can see here, resistivity divided by area equals the gradient. Okay, so when you eventually find your gradient, you will then need to multiply the gradient by the area in order to find the resistivity. Just a few uh, points. We didn't measure the cross-sectional area or the, well, we didn't measure the diameter. Um, it's important always when we're looking at this experiment that we assume the cross-sectional area is constant, but it's not. Wires are never made perfectly uniform. And that's why, in order to reduce this error, you take three measurements for diameter and you work out an average. So the question is, what have you done to ensure that this is an accurate experiment? Well, we know that the area should be controlled, but because we know that there might be some differences in cross-sectional area, we take three readings of diameter and we work out the average. And this will come in handy later. Now I'm going to go over the conclusion and evaluation with you slowly to show you what should have, should have appeared in your work. Now for the first one, describe any pattern or trend shown on the graph. Now you know from your prior analysis that we should be getting a nice straight line. We should have a nice straight line graph through the origin. Why? I'll say it again. Because resistance is proportional to length. If you got a straight line through the origin, or you got a straight line close to the origin, then you could safely say that you have what you expected, a straight line through the origin showing a proportional relationship. Okay, It does not matter if you got something which had an intercept. All that means is that you had a systematic error. How do you know it's a systematic error and it's not just... Um, a relationship with a plus C, an intercept, well, because you know you're looking for a proportional relationship. Okay, so describe any pattern or trend. I got a straight line. And you could even say, I got a straight line through the origin. Tick. Are there any anomalies? So basically, did you have any funny points that were not on the line of best fit? So did you have any random errors 
obvious random errors flying around the line like that? Or were they pretty much on the line of best fit? That's what that question is asking. Now use a gradient of the graph. This is for number three. Use a gradient of the graph to find an experimental value for the resistivity. So here you needed to show your read-offs. Or um, you could have just um, highlighted the equation from your generated graph if you didn't obviously didn't do it by hand but you would probably just call up the equation for your line of best fit and just show it highlight it or, or refer to it okay use the gradient of the graph to find the experimental value right so once you have m remember the gradient is not equal to the resistivity the gradient oops made a mess of that the gradient times the area equals the resistivity. So you need to show this calculation. Now careful because the area is probably in centimeters squared and the length which you use to find your gradient is in meters. So this would have to be in converted into meters. So your resistivity value should be quite a sensible one after those two steps. Okay, number four. Draw appropriate other lines of best fit. Oops. Okay, so that means draw a maximum and minimum gradients to find the uncertainty. So this is pretty much the same as in any other analysis. You use your error bars. So you've got to have our error bars first. And then you join perhaps the top of one error bar to the bottom of the other error bar. And then the bottom of the maximum error bar or the max um, highest point to the so the minimum of the highest point which is here you join it to the maximum of the lowest point or you take the maximum of the highest point and you join it to the minimum of the lowest point and you work out or you call up the other two equations okay so you should have three gradients in the end your actual gradient and then you have your maximum gradient and then you have your minimum gradient and there are two ways you can work out your range from there you can either from your middle gradient your real line of best fit find the largest deviation and use that one or another method which can sometimes be used if you just take the maximum subtract the minimum and then divide the difference by two okay that's another way of calculating that uncertainty okay so you would do your maximum line by joining this point to this point okay your minimum line your least gradient which would be this point to this point sorry and then you would work out your uncertainty from there I would expect at this stage to find a percentage uncertainty of about 10% because it was not a great, ex great experiment. Um, maybe a little bit higher considering the calibration we're using. But um, yeah, about 10, 15% would be acceptable. Now question five, comment on the precision of the results by analyzing the uncertainty in the value. Well. You'll, if you remember the idea of precision, um, when you had that bullseye, okay, if you get all your points around the same place, even if they're not very accurate, if you get all your, your um, shots in the same small area, then it's precise. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's accurate, it could be a complete disaster of an experiment and gives you the wrong resistivity. Now, how does that look like on a graph? Well, if you plot a graph and all your points are really on the trend line, everything is along that line, then you've got a lot of precision. But the bigger your error bars, the less likely that's to be. So if you've got something like a 10-15% uncertainty, the likelihood of having all your points on the same would be quite quite weak. So this was not a very, this probably wasn't a very precise experiment, but if you did get all your points on the line, then say so, because for perhaps the way that you did it, it, was, it wasn't too bad. Okay, now number six, suggest some sources of random error. 
Well, there are some real basic ones. The first one was that even though you tried to do the experiment at room temperature, the current that flows through the wire increases the temperature. Um, so you will find that there is a difference there. Your cross-sectional area wasn't the same everywhere. Um, that would give you a random error. The percentage, on the temperature would give you a weird kind of systematic that would increase. So it, you could call that random as well. Um, you had kinks in your wire. So unless you pulled it completely straight and like stuck to the ruler so it's exactly right. Um, so you could have little bits that you have like random errors in your length measurements. So those three would already give you something to think about. Now number seven, comment on the reliability of your results. If your results are all on a line of best fit, then it's a reliable experiment. And um, the other way around, okay? So it's refer to the spread of points around the line of best fit. If they're all on that line of, if they're all on the points, if they're all on there, then you've got a reliable as well as a precise set of results. Number eight, the textbook value of nichrome is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 6. Now you should actually have a value very similar to that. So if you don't, you need to go back and check all your units, make sure you're using meters for cross-sectional area. And then calculate the percentage difference. Well, maybe a difference of about 10 to 15 percent again would be sensible. Number nine, comment on the accuracy of the result based on the percentage difference. Well, this is getting a bit repetitive now, but again, if your percentage is high, if you get like 20, 30, 40 percent, then it's not very accurate. But if you um, if you get or even more, some of you have got like a very, very high percent, then obviously you've done the experiment wrong. But be careful because you might have just done the calculation wrong. So go back and check your calculations before you say your experiment was done badly. Now, those of you who did get a systematic error, okay, um, that would probably due to a calibration error in your resistance measurement. Okay, those voltmeters and ammeters are very sketchy, I know, but um, they do give us some nice systematic errors to then identify in the graph. So maybe have a look at the size of the systematic error. Does it match maybe one interval on the ammeter? Is it 0.5 amps? Is it one volt? I don't know, what could it be equivalent to? Evaluation. The experiment provides all the data, data needed to calculate the value for resistivity. Um, the range of length that you've used is okay, but you could always increase the accuracy by increasing the length, okay? So that would be number five, modification of experiment technique. Um, so by increasing the length and giving a much wider range to look at, not just one meter, but you could do two or three meters, then you could have a nicer, um, an easier graph to work from. Now we might actually have some diverging ideas here. I mean, if you got the right answer, then you could say that the design and method of investigation was correct if you got a nice straight line, if you got your value of resistivity. Comment on the quality of the data. Again, that pretty much depends on what your percentage uncertainties were and what your um, accuracy, how accurate the result was. But everybody did the same experiment, let's, uh, let's not forget. And if some of you manage to get a really good value of resistivity, then you all should have. So some of you are looking at errors that you've personally must made, either in calculations or in taking your readings. There are some weaknesses though. So we've already measured before, mentioned before, the temperature is not constant. As you leave the wire, plugged in, its temperature changes, and as you know, res resistance is proportional to temperature, so that will mess up your readings. The cross-sectional area is not constant. Okay, that's the second thing. And how could we improve these? Well, there's a really nice thing you can do uh, to try and reduce this idea of temperature not being constant. You can have a little switch, so you're only reading so you switch off the circuit when you're not taking your readings so there's less time for the temperature to increase so a nice switch 
And the last one may be take more readings of diameter. We may take some. Remember, we just looked up the cross-sectional areas. We didn't even measure it. So we would have to take readings of diameter and work out an average. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And I think what was mostly missing in your work, some of you, was an accurate result. Um, firstly, an understanding of the fact that we were using linearization. Okay, so the understanding that your gradient was equal to resistivity over area. And um, just a careful calculations. And then secondly, just an understanding of what could go wrong, what a systematic error is, calibration, and um, what errors would affect, what more random errors would affect your results. So that's that.